Welcome to a new video series from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. This series is on structural analysis. This particular video though is talking about understanding the compression loads in tubes. So we're not going to do calculations on how to determine the compression loads, although we're going to do that a little bit. It's really in deciding how to select your tube diameters and your tubing materials to get the compression loads that you want. Now this video series came about very similarly to how the aero terminology video series came about. Now in the videos for the UWS-4 ultralight airplane, where we're starting to do structural analysis and structural design, I'm going to be referring to a number of terms and analysis techniques fairly frequently, fairly commonly in a lot of videos. Instead of having to re-describe these over and over, I'm making these videos here on structural analysis that I'll refer back to from the UWS-4 structural design videos. Well, I was working on one of the videos on the UWS-4 structural analysis and structural design using Dan Raymer's book like we've been doing all along. In chapter 7 of Dan's book, he mentions that a steel truss fuselage can weigh about 80% more than a very similar equivalent aluminum truss fuselage. Now, another book that Dan mentions by Tom Rhodes called Stress Without Tears, Tom also mentions basically the same thing. Steel truss fuselage or steel truss itself will weigh more than a similar aluminum truss. Now, Dan doesn't go into why this is true. So I wanted to make this video to cover a little bit about why this is true. Now there's something interesting about tubing in that when it's in tension, the load limit of that tube is directly related to the tensile strength of the material. But when that tube is in compression, things are very different. In compression, at least for long tubes, and I'm not really going to define what long is here, but in long tubes, it's very different. For long tubes, it's the diameter of the tubing and the elasticity of the material that the tubing's made out of. It has almost nothing to do with the compression strength of the material or the shear strength of the material. Now here's the only page where we're going to talk about an equation here, although we're not going to do the calculations. We can calculate the load limit of a tube using Euler's column buckling equation. And that's this equation right here. There are four different conditions of the endpoints of the tube that we can use in this calculation. So let's talk about it over here. So the first one, which is this N number here, those are the four conditions that we can put in here. This first one, this N, is equal to 1. In this particular case, the ends of the tube, where you've got your pressure coming in on the ends, it's pinned where it can move around freely, except it can't actually translate in the x direction, y direction. It doesn't translate in the z direction, but the tube itself can pivot around this point. Now the n equal 4 condition is where you could think of it as being welded to a rigid plate. So the tube right here at the very end can't move at all. It can't pivot like on the pinned condition over here. The next condition we'll talk about is this free end. So it's basically fixed down here on the bottom, just like over here in n equal 4, but the other end can move around, it can wobble around freely. So that is n at 0.25, 1 quarter. Now there's another condition for n equal 2. In that case, you have one end pinned and the other end fixed. So that's what this n is here in this equation. Now the next thing is pi. You probably all know what that is, 3.14. It has to be squared. This E here is modulus of elasticity. And probably the simplest way to think about this is it's the stiffness of the material. Next one is moment of inertia. For tubes, it's easy to calculate. There are lots of good locations on the web where you can find out about moment of inertia. And I might even do a structural analysis video on that. I'm not sure. And then it's all divided by the square of the length of our tube. Now let's talk about what buckling is. Now you can kind of see what it is from over here on these diagrams. Essentially, your tube starts bending roughly in the middle, although it doesn't have to be in the middle. And then eventually it's going to fracture or crumple. And as you can imagine, look at these end numbers. If you have a fixed end tube, it's going to be able to handle four times the load of a pinned end tube, everything else being equal where we have a welded fuselage, like on a steel truss fuselage. It's not going to be pinned, but it's not really going to be fixed either. 
And that's because that weld butt can rotate just a little bit because all the other tubes in here can also bend just a little bit. So it's not exactly fixed, which means our end would be somewhere between one and four. If you wanted to have a little bit of safety factor in there, I would imagine two would work pretty good. If you want lots of safety, go ahead and use one. And so your tubes will be overbuilt. They'll be able to handle far more load than they need to, but you won't design a weak tube. But I would not use four, that's too high. You probably won't have a strong enough structure in compression if you use four. Well, now I'd like to try to get us to have a more intuitive feel for how the diameter of the tube affects the load that it can handle, the compression load. Now the example I'm going to use is N equals 1, so it's pinned on each end. And I'm going to use some standard diameters and thicknesses for tubes, for at least 4130 steel tubing that you can typically find for airplanes. It's going to be 31 inches long, and I'm going to pick some dimensions that will give us about the same weight. So our first tube, our bigger diameter tube, is going to be 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. That would be this one down here. The smaller diameter tube is going to be 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. So that's going to be this one here. Now I'm going to use fairly standard wall thickness for tubes for fuselages. And that's going to be 35 thousandths of an inch. So it's a fairly thin wall thickness. Now in order to keep these tubes the same weight so we can have a fairly fair comparison, I'm going to use 65 thousandths for the smaller diameter tube. Once you take the diameter and thickness together, we can calculate the weight for a 30 inch tube. And they're pretty close to the same. Actually, the smaller diameter tube is just a little bit heavier, within about 5%. Now, that means that they have roughly the same cross-sectional area, the, the steel cross-sectional area. That also means then, in tension, we're actually pulling the ends of the tube instead of pushing together, that they're going to have roughly the equivalent amount of force that they can handle in tension. So if you're only thinking about tension load, it wouldn't really matter which of these tubes you selected. Now there'll probably be some other factors to consider, but at least in tension, either one of these tubes will work roughly equally well. But what about the compression loads? Well, I've calculated the compression load down here using that Euler formula we just looked at. The compression load that the large diameter tube can handle is 850 pounds. The compression load that the small diameter tube can handle is 240 pounds. So the large diameter tube can handle more than three times the force of the small diameter tube, even though they weigh the same. Well, that's pretty impressive. Now these are tubes using the same material, the 4130 steel. But what about if we use different materials? How are they going to compare? Well, I'm going to compare two materials, the one we just did, the 4130 steel, and I'm going to compare aluminum, the 6061 T6 alloy. And I'm going to do two different tubes of aluminum. So I'm going to still use the large diameter steel tubing that we just looked at. So this column will be identical to the one we just looked at. Well, let's look at an aluminum tube that has the same dimensions. So it's going to have the same outer diameter and same thickness. And so that'll be a direct one-to-one -one comparison of what the material itself will do. So you can see here, it weighs about a third of the weight of the steel. So the amount of compression load that the aluminum tube can handle, same dimensions, is about 35% of what the steel tube can handle. And that's strictly due to the modulus of elasticity. The aluminum has oh, roughly a third of the modulus of elasticity of the steel. So it's not as stiff as the steel. Up here in this equation, it's very similar to the way the N works, the E works the same way. So if the modulus of elasticity is a third of another material, that means the load that it can handle for an equivalent tube is going to be a third of the other material. So that's what we're seeing here. So this ratio here will be identical to this ratio here. So you can't do a one-to-one -one replacement of aluminum for steel. But what if we increase the diameter of the tube? Let's look at this column here. So here I've made the diameter 7 eighths of an inch. So compare that to 5 eighths of an inch. I've kept the thickness the same though. So let's look at the weight. So the weight is increased quite a bit since we're using a larger diameter tube. Now it's still less than half of the steel weight. But what about that compression load? What can it handle? Well, it's more, just a little bit more than the steel. So this aluminum tube weighs less than half of the steel tube but it can carry slightly more load than the steel tube could. 
the largest contributing factor to the strengths of these tubes is the diameter. Next is going to be your modulus of elasticity. So if we go back and look at what brought this video about, this claim by Dan and by Tom that an aluminum tubing truss structure weighs less than a steel tubing one is verified by the calculations we just did. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and I'm going to be referring to this video in other videos when we're doing analysis on the UWS-4 ultralight airplane. Thanks for watching. Until next time.